Hey guys, welcome to another video on this channel. The Untamed Wilds mod for Forge aims to expand the exploration component of Minecraft through the introduction of high quality mobs and world generation. There are many different species that can be found in a variety of biomes. Let's dive in. Amphibians live close to freshwater ecosystems. Giant salamanders can be found in free variants in rivers and mountain pools. You can scoop them up in a bucket. Salamanders can swallow whole any mob which fits in their mouth. They hunt softshell turtles. Newts are small amphibians that can be found in six variants in temperate biomes. They can also be scooped up in a bucket. Arthropods are invertebrate animals with an exoskeleton. They can be found in many environments and will roam your world in 20 variants. Butterflies are the only mobs in this mod that don't spawn naturally. Instead, they have to be summoned with the hanging feeder block, which spawns butterflies matching the current biome and only provides ambience. The hanging feeder needs to be filled with honey bottles in order to work and might take some time to attract butterflies. You can catch butterflies in bottles and they will flutter around, occasionally resting on plants. King crabs are found in free variants, in temperate and cold oceans, scavenging the seafloor, minding their own business. They can be picked up with buckets. There are 8 species of tarantula that populate warm biomes. They can be picked up by right clicking with an empty bottle. They are highly aggressive against critters, so other small mobs, and will even attack other tarantulas. However, they will not attack other tarantulas of the same species. They will poison you if you step on them. Upon dying, they drop string. There is currently only one type of bird included in the mod. The terror birds are a group of extinct predatory flightless birds from the Americas that will hunt smaller mobs by kicking and pecking them. There are five variants of terror birds that can be found in forests and plains. As birds, they will lay eggs and nests, which can be picked up one by one by right-clicking on the nest. And if you find a terror bird chick, it can be tamed by feeding, so right-clicking it, with raw rabbit meat. Reptiles are tetrapod vertebrates. Most of them lay hard-shelled eggs. Tortoises can spawn in six species in most non-cold biomes. As critters, they can be picked up by right-clicking them with an empty hand. These mobs will hide in their shell when approached and they will drop 0 to 2 turtle meat pieces upon dying, which can be crafted into turtle soup. Softshell turtles can be found in 7 variants in tropical biomes, rivers and swamps. They can also be picked up by right clicking with an empty hand. These mobs are really fast in water, will attack fish if they are hungry and bask in the sunlight during noon. They drop 0 to 2 turtle meat pieces upon dying as well. Monitor lizards spawn in 5 variants in mesa, savanna, jungle and swamp biomes. This group includes the largest living lizards, and while they are not hostile to the player, they will strike back if threatened. They hunt small animals by catching them and shaking them. There are 17 different species of snakes that live in the non-cold biomes of Minecraft. They are pretty small and can therefore be picked up, which you shouldn't do in real life by the way. Some of the snake species are venomous, with certain species being potentially deadly. They will attack any mob that steps on them, so you should be careful around them. Snakes will rarely drop a shed of skin, and if you get a four of them, they can be crafted into one piece of leather. But there are also two species of larger snakes that you might encounter in jungles and swamps, the anaconda and reticulated python. These animals are dangerous, but lazy apex predators of land and water. Their stats might not be too intimidating, however, they can instantly kill medium-sized prey by swallowing it. After swallowing their prey, they will need a few days to rest. Because of their length, their body will bend to adapt to the terrain. There is also one type of mollusk included in the mod. Giant clams can be found on the bottom of warm shallow oceans. There are four different species, and they can be dug up and transported with a shovel by right licking. Note that it might take multiple tries to do so. They can be used as decorations for tropical fish tanks and have no predators. Upon dying, they can drop pearls or giant pearls. These items can be crafted into blocks or can be sold to fishermen villagers. Reptile, amphibian and bird mobs will create a nest instead of creating a baby. These nests will randomly spawn baby mobs, or you can use them to get eggs and spawn them yourself, both by right clicking. If two mobs happen to breed in the wild, they will create a nest. This will only happen rarely. If you jump on nests, they will be destroyed. Let's move on to mammals. Artvarks are small animals that live in savannas. They will occasionally dig for food, sometimes finding an artvark cucumber or some junk. The artvark cucumber can be eaten. These mobs drop rabbit hide and animal fat upon dying. Baleen whales are mammals that live underwater. There are six different species of them, including the blue whale, the largest animal in the world, and they can be rarely found in deep oceans. These mobs are peaceful filter feeders and drop a large amount of bones, high quality meat and blubber upon dying. Blubber can be used to craft torches or smelt it into animal fat for other uses. 
you can find eight different types of bears. They can be found in jungles, as well as most cold and temperate biomes. Depending on the biome, you will find different species. If you disturb a sleeping bear or try to approach a bear cub, nearby adult bears will attack you. Some bears also actively hunt players for food, such as the polar bear. They can even raid your chests or any other inventory for food, so you need to protect these blocks. On death, they drop bear meat, fat, bones and fur. Baby bears can be tamed, but depending on the species, you need different items for that. There are seven species of big cats, which can be encountered in most land biomes. Some of them will hunt players if they are hungry enough. However, that should only happen rarely. You should also stay away from big cat cubs. Upon dying, they drop some bones and fur. Big cats will avoid combat when their health falls below 40%. Baby big cats can also be tamed. Depending on the species, you will need different items for that again. For lions, cave lions, saber tooths and snow leopards, you'll need beef. For jaguars, leopards and tigers, you'll need pork chop. For marsupial lions, chicken and for mountain lions, rabbit. Bison spawn in two species and can be found in plains and forests, where they spawn in larger groups. Male bisons will occasionally charge at each other, and the herd will come together in order to trample a potential threat to their safety. If you kill them, they will drop beef, leather fat and bones. However, they will fight back. As an easter egg, you can ride a bison. You can encounter four species of boars in rainforests, savannas and temperate forests. They sometimes dig up food from the ground, which can destroy your crops. They will also defend themselves if attacked. Boars drop pork chop, leather and fat. As an easter egg, you can ride a boar as well. Camels are included in free variants and will spawn in extreme climates. They are especially suited for desert habitats and drop beef, leather fat and bones upon dying. If you attack them, they will defend themselves. Camels will also spit at nearby mobs at random, which deals no damage. The hippo is the most dangerous animal of this mod, because it is one of the deadliest wild mammals in the world. It can be found in swamps and savannas, in groups of 2 to 6. Hippos will attack any large mob that steps into the water in their territory, including players. Outside of the water, however, you can approach a hippo without being attacked, but it will defend itself of course if you hit it. Upon dying, hippos drop a lot of high quality meat, leather, bones and animal fat. Hyenas roam around in groups and can be found in savannas or mesa biomes. Some of the five different species will spawn in large packs. However, individually they are not as strong. Upon dying, they don't drop anything. You can tame baby hyenas with rotten flesh. Manatees can be encountered in five variants and are also called sea cows. These water-bound animals are found in shallow oceans and jungles, where they consume kelp and seaweed. On death, they will drop bones and meat. A certain variant even drops blubber. Rhinos are large horned grazers that usually roam around alone in jungles, savannas, or in the case of the woolly rhino, snowy tundras. There are six species, and these mobs are neutral. However, they will attack stronger creatures that approach their calves. They attack by charging at a target, which is extremely dangerous, but can be dodged. Upon dying, rhinos drop a lot of high quality meat, leather, bones and animal fat. You can tame baby rhinos with watermelon slices. The opossum is one of the very few marsupials that live outside Australia and will spawn in forests. Opossums are most known by how they play dead when threatened, which they will do in-game as well, but they will also hiss at you if approached. Wildebeests can be found in two species. They are related to cows and will spawn in groups in savannas. Wildebeests are really fast and will panic and scatter if any member of the herd is threatened by a player or predator. Just like cows, wildebeests are a source of beef and leather. Finally, there are many different fish included in the mod. Arowana can be found in four variants, in water bodies, in jungles and swamps. They sometimes jump out of the water and you can use a bucket to catch and transport them. They drop tropical fish upon dying. Catfish can spawn in three variants, in river, swamp and jungle biomes. They can also be scooped up with a bucket and will drop raw cod upon dying. Football fish are rare and can only be found in the bottom of deep oceans. They are slow but highly aggressive hunters and will prey on any other weaker fish. They don't drop anything on death. Sawfish can spawn in five variants, in mangrove swamps and shallow warm ocean biomes. They drop rotten fish when you kill them. There are 10 different species of sharks, which can be found in all types of oceans. Most shark species will freely swim around in the ocean, but free variants will stay at the ocean floor. They are apex predators in the ocean. They are usually not hostile to players, but will attack anything that has been wounded, so you should still watch out for them. They drop rotten flesh on death. Spadefish are schooling fish, which can be found in four variants, in most ocean biomes, and you can scoop them up in a bucket to transport them. They don't drop anything upon dying. Ocean sunfish can spawn in two species and are found in deeper oceans, basking in the surface. 
This mob is slow and passive, and if you slay it, it will drop 1 to 6 tropical fish. There are 5 species of Trevally that can be encountered in non-cold and non-frozen oceans. They are scooting fish, and you can scoop them up in a bucket to transport them. They drop some fish on death. Trigger fish can be found in 7 variants in warm ocean biomes. They eat small mollusks hiding in the sand, and will shoot water at the seafloor to expose them. You can scoop them up in a bucket, and they make for great decoration. They don't drop anything upon death. The whale shark is a passive, slow-moving shark, which feeds on microscopic plankton, like baleen whales do. Whale sharks can be found in tropical oceans and are the largest known living fish species. They will swim around aimlessly, providing some ambience to tropical oceans. They also don't drop anything. The spitter is a creature that can be rarely found in lush caves. It is a highly territorial mob that is capable of spitting poisonous slime and that is dangerous in melee combat. The larva are also capable of spitting and will support the closest adult. You will notice them by their pale purple color and their flute-like sounds. The mob is not mentioned in the encyclopedia and needs to be unlocked by looking at one with a spy glass. If you get two to breed, they will leave a glimmering egg in the water that you can pick up. For the egg to hatch, it must be placed in water. The mob born from the egg can be tamed with glow lichen. Note that all mobs only spawn as a part of the world generation, so the first time you generate a chunk, so they will not spawn naturally after that. Also note that some mobs can generate with different skins, some of which are quite rare. If you installed patchouli, you can craft an in-game guide with a height of your choice and a book. This guide will give you some interesting real-life information about these mobs. In the configs you can activate breeding of all mobs. To find out which item you need to breed a certain species, craft the in-game guide and look for the page with the information about the favorite food. This item is used for breeding, if enabled in the configs. If you want to find out the species of a mob, use a spyglass, which will tell you some information about the mob. Furthermore, there is a variety of new plants that can now appear in your world, like canola, yarrow, hemlock, june grass and pampas grass bushes. Hemlock will poison you if you touch it, and can be crafted into suspicious stew, and canola into yellow dye. There are also creosote and temperate bushes for decoration. In swamps and near rivers you can find common reed, that can be used as fuel or be crafted into sticks. Elephant ear and water hyacinth can be found in jungles. Water hyacinth can be turned into dye. Corpse flower can also be found in jungles, and be farmed for corpse flower corn to plant a new one. The corpse flower smell will slowly attract undead and arthropod mobs. Amazon salts appear in swamps and jungles. Zimbabwe aloe can be found in mesa biomes and eelgrass grows in most oceans. Anemones can be found in non-frozen oceans. If you touch them, they will poison you. And finally, there are four colors of tree orchid that are currently not generated anywhere. Furthermore, there are some new building blocks. Pearl and lard blocks can be crafted out of pearl and animal fat respectively. There are different types of rugs that can be crafted using the heights that are currently dropped by bears and big cats. More mobs will drop heights in future updates. A cage trap is useful to catch and transport larger mobs. Simply craft it, place it down, and when a mob walks on a trap, the block will close with the mob inside. Then mine the block and place it down wherever you want. Press right click to release the mob again. Any animal besides boss mobs can be caged. Animal fat can be used as an alternative crafting material for candles, can be eaten raw for a saturating meal, or can be crafted into pemmican, which can be eaten. Pachyderm meat is dropped by rhinos, hippos and whales. Chum can be crafted and then used in water by right-clicking. This will attract every water mob in a radius and makes them approach you. It is especially useful if you want to get closer to deep water mobs, which are otherwise hard to get to. Ownership deeds can be used to transfer the ownership of a mob from one player to another. Right click on a tamed mob you own to bind its ownership to the contract and then give it to another player, so the player takes over the ownership. There are also some unobtainable creative mode items. The giant eraser can be used to remove mobs. The mob highlighter can be used to mark mobs, so you can see them glowing through walls. Love potions can be used to breed animals. Growth tonic can be used to make mobs larger. And you can really use this item to create some Godzilla-like animals, like giant tarantulas. Ipecac makes mobs hungry and triggers hunting behavior. With the mob analyzer, you can get all the relevant information about a mob, like health, maximum health, gender, species, hunger, and other stats like the echo level. The echo level basically tells you the strength of a mob. Predators with a high echo level will hunt mobs with a lower echo level, and mobs with a low echo level will flee from predators with a high echo level. The eco level is based on HP and attack, 
so wounded lion for example, will be unable to hunt due to its low eco level. And this is it for this video. While trying out this mod, I really became a fan of Untamed Wilds. Especially the emphasis on real animals and species, as well as realistic behaviors and great animations is amazing. The mod is definitely one of the best in its category and on par with Naturalist and Alex Mobs. And overall an amazing choice if you are looking for a Minecraft Animals mod with realistic mobs. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment or subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.